Hey guys, John Blood with you, and today I wanted to revisit the Asperia Prowler and basically its combat case capabilities because a lot of people on my last video said that I wasn't really comparing it fairly going against the Freelancer Miss, and instead that I should really be comparing it to other dropships, which I suppose is a fair comparison, or at least one that's worth reviewing. So what we have in game right now is the Prowler along with the two other dropships being the Valkyrie and the Vanguard Hoplite. Now, all of these ships are designed to carry passengers from point A to point B, be able to deploy them, support them on their excursion, and get out of dodge. That being said, they appear to do these in very significantly different ways. Uh, looking at the Prowler first, uh, it's designed to leverage stealth and really be able to get in um, your troops uh, almost more as a boarding ship, though it could easily do ground drops as well. Um, those hover pads should really do a nice job of providing kind of control along a large ship surface or maybe running really low on a uh, surface of a planet. But where the Prowler appears to be focused more on the ship's boarding space is by having the larger weapons and less actual egress coverage in the form of turrets. The Valkyrie, on the other hand, is basically the complete opposite. It's really meant for more ground-based operations as, as supported by the multiple remote-controlled mantises on remote turrets, plus the uh, side egress doors where you have the Scorpion Gatling guns that can lay down suppressing fire against the defenders. Um, this ship should work well for landing ups in a ship as well, like if you're able to land in a hangar, um, but it does lack the larger weaponry able to do more against some larger ships. The Hoplite, on the other hand, is kind of a combat-heavy fighter that was retrofitted into the role of dropship basically because the Forgotten Redeemer wasn't going to be ready for Showtime in Squadron 42, which still also isn't out, so they made this work. Uh, now, there are seats, it's functional, but what you have is a lot of forward-facing weaponry and a turret on top, like all other vanguards, so it's hardly effective at really protecting you against ground threats as your troops are exiting the ship, meaning it's kind of a hybrid between the two almost by accident, though. But the different configurations almost play into the capability aspects differently. Um, the Prowler, which almost seems like it replaced the Redeemer as the gunboat and dropship combo, though they slapped the Alien logo on it and increased the price by $150, has a distinct pure combat advantage. Uh, looking again at the weaponry and trying to make these all as similar as possible with fast-firing ballistics, we look at the Prowler that can carry two Revenants and two Mantises, delivering a total of 2,304 DPS in output. The Hoplite, which has a Revenant, four ballistic nose repeaters, and two sawbucks on the turret, can have a maximum damage per second of 2,450, so a little bit higher than that of the Prowler. And finally, when we look at the Valkyrie, which actually has the most guns, including four total mantises and four scorpions, that results in a DPS of 2,772, meaning the difference from top, being the Valkyrie, to the bottom Prowler is about 460 DPS, just shy of having an additional mantis on board your ship. So while those numbers are close, with a distinct numerical advantage going to the Valkyrie, there's two major considerations there. One being that weapons convergence, uh, and two being the crew total required. The Prowler and the Hoplite have all weapons able to hit the target the pilot is after, while the Valkyrie has weapons along the side that can't really converge on the front as needed. Not to mention, for the Valkyrie and the um, Hoplite, turret gameplay is better than it was, but it's not potentially as good as it could be. Um, now, that being said, those weapons on the side of the Valkyrie are good for suppression. So if you have ships that are all over the place, they could technically help keep people away from you, which is a deterrent, but not necessarily an actual DPS plus. So when you really look at the damage per second output, it's mostly theoretical for the uh, Valkyrie. The other side is the crew that's required, because with the pilot being able to control the total DPS on the Prowler, basically all 2,304, a pilot and a turret gunner on the Hoplite, and then you have the Valkyrie that's really struggling, which requires the pilot plus five people to control all the weapons. So if you look at the maximum DPS divided by the total number of people to achieve that, you have 2,304 for the Prowler, because it's all being done by the pilot, 1,225 for the Vanguard, and 462 for the Valkyrie. Granted, that's not a real perfect breakdown since the Vanguard, for example, you know, the vast majority of that firepower is on the pilot, but you get the idea. Um, you know, another way to look at that is that the DPS of pilot-controlled weapons, and that looks, again, 2,304 for the Prowler, 1,852 for the Vanguard, and 426 for the Valkyrie. It's a major win for the Prowler, and it really just makes it the best combat vessel of this group from a damage output perspective. 
Now, in the case of components, things are mostly par for the course. Um, with all three of these coming in with two size two shields as well as two size two coolers, um, they come with different performing component stock, but they can be kitted out to be basically identical. So it's not really worth discussing here other than saying that the shields on the Prowler are far superior in initial strength, but it falls behind in the regen timers and on the coolers. Um, you know, as far as that, the, those coolers, you really talk about the Hoplite and the Valkyrie. Um, they have ones that outperform the Prowler, but again, they can be upgraded. The real limiting factor of the Prowler is that it only has one size two power plants, while the Hoplite and Valkyrie both have two, um, two of those. Now, in addition, that Cirrus power plant that the Prowler comes with only has an output of 4063 compared to 9,375 on just one of the Maelstrom power plants on the other two ships. And they both have two of those. Now, when we look at the, those numbers, I'm actually pretty surprised that the power draw for the Prowler isn't more of an issue right now. So I'm curious what's actually implemented in game and how everything's hooked up. Now, as mentioned in the prior video on the Prowler, I was using it in Pirate Swarm and the large number of enemies and missiles couldn't bring my shields down. That being said, I played more in the Persistent Universe and the PTU, specifically doing like claim jumper missions. And what we see there is a bunch of pesky prospectors and distortion weapons um, that seem to be actually working better than they were before. So I don't know if distortion's finally working again in the PU or not. Along with the, the uh, gun platforms that you're supposed to take out, uh, and without the breaks between rounds that you have in Arena Commander, I actually saw those Sukaran shields starting to struggle to keep up a little bit. Now, I'm not certain if this was a power restriction or if they finally sustained enough damage that they couldn't actually, um, or sustained enough damage and actually continuing to hit me on and on and on so my um, shields couldn't regen. Now, they didn't kill me by any means, but the shields still were having a hard time keeping up. Um, I've done actually significantly better in ships with the Miss, where I like to run an FR-76 and a Rampart. Um, but, you know, aside from that, I had a relatively standard loadout for the Prowler, aside from the weapons that I changed, and it wasn't as good as I initially thought it was. Now, aside from the stats and components, the other areas to really consider is the size of the bay um, that you have in the back. And what you see is the Vanguard and the Prowler are really limited just to being able to deliver personnel. While the Valkyrie can actually haul some cargo, or more importantly for its designed role, you can bring along vehicles like rovers to help support your incursion, also supporting the idea that you want to focus on ground engagements there, that you could opt for things like space bikes and still have a pretty good time getting your personnel out and engaging another ship. Um, I personally look at this and say the Valkyrie is probably the best designed dropship based on the weapons convergence um, or coverage, the components, the vehicle ability, um, but the crew requirements to really manage all of the weapons make it significantly more focused on that drop role. Um, the ability to drop 16 crew with the Prowler with only one required pilot that can leverage all the weapons on the ship and actually be a potent combat vessel aside from that makes it the best fighting ship you can get out of this group while still being able to drop the troops. Um, the Hoplite's kind of stuck in the middle, you know, being a ship that should never have really been a dropship and feels more like an ugly um, than a proposed designed vehicle, um, making me still wish the Redeemer would have been fleshed out instead of us having this discussion and waiting on that to make its comeback as a gunship. Um, regardless, the Prowler has a few more limitations than I initially had thought, um, but as a dropship that can be used as a heavy target assassin as needed, it is more than capable. I don't like the price of the Prowler, but it's hard to argue with the results. And I think right now it is still one of the better combat ships in the game, as long as you're not overwhelmed by more targets than you can handle that are keeping your shields down for significant amounts of time. And you can end up swapping out those shields for something that doesn't work like a Sugaran, um, probably like what I typically run on my miss. And I think the Prowler becomes one of the best um, options in the game, though that power plant limitation is probably going to be a problem long term. Um, so I would definitely suggest running ballistics on the Prowler because the more energy draw that you have, the more the ship's going to really kind of uh, struggle. So anyways, I hope that answers some of the questions that my first video may have left off. Um, but if there are more comments, please get them into the section below. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Stay tuned for a lot more coming soon. Have yourselves a wonderful day and take care.